Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now start from step 1. Now initial steps we have already discussed to some extent but still we will talk about it once more just to get a, a, an understanding of the entire flow. So first we will talk about the isolation of DNA. So let us now talk about isolation of DNA. So why do we talk about isolating DNA? Now the main focus, our main focus is on the gene of interest that is our desired gene. So this desired gene is located on a DNA and where is the DNA present? DNA is present on the chromosome inside the nucleus of the cell of that organism. Like every organism will, is made up of cells. Now inside the cell you have the nucleus and inside the nucleus you have the chromosomes and on the chromosomes are located the genes. So we are interested in one of these genes. So our gene of interest is also located on these kind of chromosomes. And where, where, what is this chromosome made up of? It is made up of nothing but DNA. So in order to isolate this gene, we want to isolate this gene. So if I want to isolate a gene, what do I need to do? I need to isolate the DNA that to in pure form. That means I want only the DNA. Now inside the cell, you have DNA along with RNA, you have carbohydrates, you have proteins, you have histone proteins, you have lipids. So many things are also present inside the nucleus, but we want only the DNA in pure form. So when I say pure form, that means it should contain only DNA, nothing else. So we are interested in DNA in the pure form. Right? Now, we all know that how is DNA present inside the nucleus? DNA is a very, very long chain, the double-stranded structure. Lengthwise, it is very long. So, it cannot present be present inside the nucleus just like that because the dimension of the nucleus is smaller than the length of the DNA. So, how is DNA present inside the nucleus? In the form of coiled structure. So, it is coiled over histone proteins somewhat like this. So, here you can see the histone octamer. So, these histone proteins are present and DNA is rolled over them in uh, to form uh, curves and that is how it is accommodated inside the nucleus. So now the question is if I say that DNA has to be extracted from a cell in pure form so how do we do that? Now since DNA is very closely present along with RNA or histone proteins so how do we extract it separately and also if you want to bring it out of the cell so you also need something which can actually break or which can actually overcome the cell wall and everything and bring just the DNA out. So who will help us for that purpose? Enzymes are needed for this purpose. So enzymes play a very important role in isolating DNA in its pure form. That is the enzymes will make sure that only DNA can be isolated and it doesn't have mixture of any other biomolecules. So let us see what are the enzymes that participate in the process. So the enzymes which are involved in isolation of DNA are cellulase is one of the enzymes. So what does cellulase do? Cellulase is that enzyme which helps to break down cellulose and cellulose is a very important component of the cell wall which is present in plants. So this is cellulose and cellulose is an important constituent of plant cell wall. So cellulose can be broken down with the help of cellulase. There is another enzyme called pectinase. It helps to break down pectin and pectin is again an important component of the cell wall. So here you can see the structure of pectin. Chitinase, it helps to break down chitin which is an important constituent of the fungal cell wall. So protein, so cellulose, pectin, chitin, they all are components of the cell wall. So we need enzymes to break down the cell wall because the DNA needs to be brought out through the cell wall. So until and unless you uh, are able to remove the cell wall, you will not get the DNA out of the cell. Other than these you also have enzymes like protease which helps to decompose the proteins like the histone proteins which are present in close relation with the DNA. With the help of protease DNA will not get uh, altered but the histone proteins will be decomposed. 
we will also make use of ribonuclease to decompose the RNA which is again present in close relation with the DNA so that is how the RNA can also be decomposed so what will we be left at the end lipase will help to break down the lipids lipids are present in the cell membrane so this is how you can break down the cell wall you can break down the cell membrane and you can bring the dna out and you can also remove the histone proteins and rna which are present in close relation to dna with the help of protease and ribonuclease so all these enzymes are involved in the process of isolation of dna now when all other biomolecules have been decomposed what are you left with you are left with dna and this is how dna DNA is isolated from the cell out, I mean, out of the crowd of all other biomolecules. So the next step is cutting of DNA at specific location. So now we have got the DNA alone. So now DNA doesn't have anything else. It is the pure form of DNA. Now we want to cut the DNA at specific location so that we can take only that piece of DNA which contains the gene of interest. So how do we do that? So cutting the DNA involves DNA scissors or the restriction endonuclease enzymes. Those molecules which cut DNA at specific locations. So we have already discussed about these enzymes. Now these enzymes how they cut they can produce either uh, the sticky ends or the blunt ends. And I'm not going to discuss the concept again because we discussed that in one of the previous slides. So the restriction enzymes will help to cut the DNA. So now you get only that desired cut piece of DNA which contains the gene of interest because you do not want to carry that big DNA because the gene of interest is present only in a small part. So it is better to cut only that part and you have only that desired piece of DNA. So the DNA is cut. So now we have to cut the DNA of the vector. So we need a vector DNA because this foreign DNA. This is the foreign DNA or you can call it as alien DNA. So this foreign DNA needs to combine with the vector to form the recombinant DNA. So the vector DNA should have space for its DNA. So this is the vector DNA which is mostly a plasmid DNA. So this also needs to be cut so to create space for the foreign DNA. So this cutting is also done by the same restriction endonuclease enzyme which has cut this foreign piece of DNA and then what happens? The DNA fragments which are formed by restriction endonucleases, they are separated by the gel electrophoresis technique. Now, as I explained before, that these restriction enzymes will create several fragments of the DNA. But we need to decide which fragment of DNA do we need. So, what do we do? So we perform this technique of gel electrophoresis where we apply electricity. So when you apply electricity under the influence of electric field, the fragments will get separated from each other based upon their masses. So the lighter ones will move a farther distance whereas the heavier ones will remain here. So this is where the heavier ones will remain and the lighter ones will come towards this direction. So that is how we can separate the DNA fragments and we can choose out of these DNA fragments. Now once we have chosen a desired DNA fragment then takes place the formation of recombinant DNA where the chosen DNA, no, so that particular piece of DNA which was cut earlier so that like that multiple pieces of DNA would have been cut. So all those uh, they undergo through the gel electrophoresis technique then we finally decide on one piece of DNA so this piece of DNA will then combine with the plasmid DNA or the vector to form the recombinant DNA so this is the recombinant DNA so this recombinant DNA has two very important features one is that it contains our gene of interest Secondly, uh, it has the capability of self-replicating independently. So because of these two features, it is special and because of this, it could be directly introduced into the host cell. So this is how a recombinant DNA will be formed. So how during the formation of recombinant DNA, DNA ligase enzyme helps in the linkage because it acts as a glue to stick the cut piece DNA into the plasmid DNA. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience.
Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.